Good morning, basahan tayo ng ating libro guys, The Story of the Philippine People by Agoncillo N. Guerrero. Pabilis ang basa na. Sir 9, December 2022 today. History of the Filipino People, nasa part 3 pa rin tayo, Reform and Revolution. Topic number 8. Dito tayo sa paragraph mag, ng The Great Reformist Magdugtong, paragraph Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Kung kahapon Graciana Lopez ay na, today is Marcelo H. Del Pilar, babasahin natin. Basa. Marcelo S. Del Pilar, the political analyst of the Filipino colony in Spain, was born in the barrio of Copang, Bulacan, Bulacan on August 30, 1850, the son of Julian H. Del Pilar and Blas Agat Mayton. His father was a poet of sorts and from him Marcelo inherited him love for the arts. As a young man, he studied at the College of San Jose and later at the University of Santo Tomas, where he finished his law course in 1880. His sense of justice led him early in life to campaign against the abuses of the priors and since there was no freedom of speech and of the press, at the time he paid for his temerity with a month's imprisonment. In 1878, he married his first cousin, Marciana del Pilar, by whom he had several children with only Anita and Sofia surviving. So, nung araw guys, allowed yung first cousin na mag-asawa. Marcelo began his career as his country's evangelist in 1880 when he took to the field to campaign against the forces that that stipulated freedom and progress in the Philippines. He made the plaza and the cockpits, even the small chindas, his platform preaching the gospel of work, self-respect and dignity. He was a master of the Tagalog and in this language he tried to arouse the consciousness of the masses to the necessity of acting as unified people. In 1882, he founded the nationalistic newspaper Jaryong Tagalog. He wrote of patriotism and the sad state of the country. The newspaper, however, did not live long enough to become a major force in Filipino society. Nevertheless, Del Pilar carried his personal campaign against abuses of the Spaniards to the different barrios and towns of Bulacan. Once at a barrio fiesta, Del Pilar heard a prior holding forth on the miracles of the saints. He asked the priest, How many miraculous saints do we have in the Philippines? To those was the priest's quick reply, Ah, Del Pilar said without concealing his sarcasm in that case, Spain ought to envy the Philippines. For her, all saints are miraculous. Not to be outwitted, the unsuspecting priest replied, Even there in Spain, my son, but there in Spain, Marcelo said, The priests are not so miraculous as those in our country. This statement drew them the laughter of the crowd and the prior embarrassed. embarrassed. And wait now. And humiliated fled and called out the civil guard. But Del Pilar was smart. He lived hurriedly and disappeared among the crowd before the guards arrived. The year 1888 was significant to Del Pilar for it was in that year that he gave his life wholly to the propagation of uncommon, at least in the Philippines, ideas. He wrote pamphlet after pamphlet ridiculing prior sovereignty and exposing the injustices committed almost daily against the Filipinos. In the same year, the Spanish prior Jose Rodriguez issued a series of pamphlets denouncing Rizal and his no limitangery. One of these pamphlets, Kaingat Kayo, savagely attacked Rizal as an enemy of the Holy Catholic religion. It described Rizal as nobles, noble as a bad book which should not be read. Del Pilar immediately jumped to the defense of Rizal by issuing... Naabotan na naman tayo ng oras. Alitin ko guys ha. It describes results novel as a bad book which should not be read. Del Pilar immediately jumped to the defense of result by issuing his brilliant pamphlet Kaiigat Kayo. 
ushering the edictment of, of Rodriguez's pamphlet using the pen name Dolores Manapat, at the same time, the nationalistic Filipino priest Vicente Garcia of Tanawan Batangas refuted Father Rodriguez using the pen name V. V. Garcia, not content with defending Rizal, Del Pilar wrote the withering satire the Salan at Toksuhan, a brilliant parody of the prayer book, thus in Amain Namin, a parody of Our Father, Del Pilar said, Our uncle, who art in the convent cursed by thy name, may we be delivered from the grid, may thy truth be slit her on earth as it is in heaven. Give back this day our daily rise, thou hast stolen from us, Andrew. Oh, parang alam yung, ano guys, yung, yung ating Our Father Heart in Heaven. Parang binago nila, tignan mo. Ulitin ko lang siya. Not content with defending result, the pillar wrote the white ring satire, the salan at tuksuhan, a brilliant parody of the prayer book, thus in Amain Namin, a parody of Our Father, the pillar said. Our uncle, who art in the convent, cursed be thy name. May we be delivered from thy creed. May thy truth be slit her on earth as it is in heaven. Give back this day our daily rise. Thou hast stolen from us and draw our laughter by thy loving as thou laughest when thou stillest our money. And deliver us from thine temptation and save us from thine foul mouth. From thine foul mouth. Amen. <laughs> Ang galing naman ni Delphilar. Del Pilar also parodied the Ten Commandments to ridicule the priors, the most potent single group in the Philippines. He called this particular work the Ten Commandments of the Priors, namely, Thou shalt worship and love the priors above all. Thou shalt not cheat them of their stipends. Thou shalt sanctify the priors on these or holidays. Thou shalt pawn thyself to pay for the burial of thy father and mother. Thou shalt it Thou shouldst not die if thou hast not the money to pay for thine interment. Thou shalt not covet his wife. Thou shalt not steal with him. Thou shalt not accuse him, even if thou be called a liar. Thou shalt not refuse him, your wife. Thou shalt not deny him your property. The Ten Commandments of the Priors boil down to two things. First, worship the prior above all, and second, offer him thy honor and wealth. <laughs> Kalukuhan niya doon, ni Del Pilar, oh. Ang galing naman. Parang inano niya yung Ten Commandments, guys. Pinalitan lang niya. Okay. The, yung number 10. Thou shalt not deny him your property, the Ten Commandments of the Priors, well done, to two things. First, worship the prior above all, and second, offer him thy honor and wealth. Aside from this salutary uh, called the Salan at Tuksuhan, Del Pilar wrote to Pluhan, Kadakilaan ng Diyos, pasong, pasyong dapat ipag-alab ng puso ng ta taong babasa sagot ng Espanya sa hibig ng Pilipinas to the La Soberanya, Monacala, Prilorocracia, Pri Filipina, and scores of it editorials and articles published in the Soul. His radical activities could no longer be toler tolerated by the Spanish authorities who promptly ordered his arrest, but Del Pilar escaped the country and left for Spain in October 1888. In December 1889, he took over the editorship of the Sol and became the moving spirit behind the reform movement. He, to he told in incessantly writing, editing the Sol and contacting progressive Spaniards who would fight side by side with the Filipino reformists. In the process, he missed many, he missed many a meal. In one of his editorials, he said, There is an aspiration for better life in the Philippines. The people who paid the, the taxes, the country that supports the Spanish flag with its farm and blood, this faithful country is aware that she is not composed of mere flock of sheep. This country does not ask any kind of sacrifice from Spain, and all she asks is that she be governed well or ill, but with a full understanding of causes that the country be heard through legitimate means. 
nakakapagtaka naman kasi ang layo-layo ng Spain. Bakit tayo sinakop ng Spaniards? Ba ang layo ng Spain sa Pilipinas? Siguro kung hindi lang din po may mga Pilipino na magpasakop, hindi tayo masasakop. Kasi kita mo ba't sila pula po? Oh. Hindi po mayag na i-Christianize sila. Hindi naman sila na ano, di ba? Opinion ko lang yun. <laughs> so, ito natin. Pasahin ulit natin. There is an aspiration for a better life in the Philippines. The people who pay Ta the taxes, the country that supports the Spanish flag with its farm and blood, is faithful country is aware that she is not composed of mere flock of sheep. The country, this country does not ask any kind of sacrifice from Spain. All she asks is that she be governed well or ill, but with full understanding of causes that the country be fair. Through legitimate means, we are asking for assimilation. We demand that those islands be hispanized. Under the pillar, the aims of the soul were expanded to include the removal of the priors and the secularization of the parishes, active participation in the affairs of the government, freedom of the speech of the priests, and of assembly, a wider social and political freedom, equality before the law, assimilation, and representation in the Spanish court since the Filipinos had never been truly represented in that body. Spain, however, had her own internal problems to look after and therefore could not listen attentively to the angest cry of the Filipino reformers. Del Pilar became disillusioned and on the eve of his death, switched his vigorous mind from assimilation to revolution, he said. Insurrection is the last remedy, especially when the people have acquired the belief that peaceful means to secure the... Remedies for Abel's proved futile. He planned to call the leaders of the reform movement of, to a meeting at Hong Kong in order to take steps toward the liberation of the country from Spanish tyranny. But he was gravely ill, he was missing his meal, cigarettes he had none, and to minimize the biting cold and wood, cold he Wait lang guys. He was missing his meal, cigarettes he had none, and to minimize the biting cold, he would walk the streets of Barcelona to pick up cigarettes, cigarette butts to smoke. The soul had no longer the plans necessary to continue the campaign for reforms. Rizal was already in the pitan as an exile, though Bisayna was sick. So was Jose Panganiban, Del Pilar's daughter, Anita, Anita sent him a piso, but love and devotion alone could not stop of hunger. Friendless and hungry, the great reformist and political analyst died on July 4, 1896. Upon his death, even his Spanish political adversaries paid him a homage. See the Spanish newspaper La Politica de España in Filipinas, the organ of the priors. Marcelo del Pilar was the greatest journalist produced by the purely Filipino race. We did not consider him as an artful, artful filibuster. At times, we saw in him the calculating conspirator, the journalist Gan Astray, who had no real hatred for the sovereign country, though he should he had it for the state of a first prevailing the end of the province. But whatever the truth may be, we must not lose sight on the of the fact that it was Marcelo de Tagalog who was published inspired us with the greatest esteem when, ser when serenely and apparently with the greatest sincerity he gave his views on very arduous political problems more correct and form than, than more correct and form than any other skillful in debate tenacious in maintaining his call in maintaining his conclusions, the personality of Marcelo del Pilar as a propagandist is doubtless the greatest produced by the Tagalog race. While he had not the culture and intensity of purpose of his countrymen, Rizal, he had however the advantage of knowing how to install the, his thoughts in his double manner in, in a subtle manner. Sorry, huh? A little, a little. While he had not the culture and intensity of purpose of his countrymen, result he had, however, the advantage 
of knowing how to install his thoughts in a subtle manner into the minds of his followers. So, bukas na yung Jose Rizal, guys. Hanggang dito na lang muna tayo sa, ano, kay Marcelo It's Del Pilar. Bye, everyone. God bless.